Now, in another video, we looked at how to make a bar chart from some categorical data, some raw categorical data. And so what I'd like to do now is I would like to make a pie chart. A pie chart is another kind of graph that you can make with categorical data. Now, one thing I want to caution um, new users about is that pie charts are meant to be very, very simple. Um, you can't plot multiple data sets, multiple columns of variables in a pie chart. Um, the pie chart data has to be uh, has to add up to 100%. Um, it has to make some sense as a whole. If you're asking a question, uh, it can have it can have multiple answers, different categories, not just yes or no, but every person who answers it can only answer one thing. So if you're asking a question like, uh, what kind of pets do you have? And they can check off both cat and dog, then that's not gonna go into a pie chart. Just because something's expressed as a percentage doesn't mean it can go into a pie chart. Things have to meaningfully add up to 100% or it's not gonna work. So. When we have the raw data like this, each student comes from one place of national origin that they put in on their, their applications. So this data will be fine for us. Same thing for gender. Um, again, it's somewhat dated to have only male and female as options, but um, that was very standard. So those are the only two things that you can choose. Uh, and so we can make pie charts of either one of these. Now, a rule of thumb for pie charts is that you generally don't want too many slices. Um, the rule of thumb is about seven. Uh, from the, We're gonna just use the same data that we had before. And we have more than seven nations in our data. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it. And then we can talk about like why this is maybe not the best um, graph for nationality. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the graph option. And again, we can use the pie chart option or we can use the graph builder option. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select the pie chart. Uh, and this is going to work basically the same way that it did before. Um, the categorical variables that we want to choose from, I'm going to choose gender because gender will actually make a good quality pie chart and we'll come back to nationality later you Can double click on it or you can like list the column name. Um, we're going to chart counts of unique values. Um, again, if you have pre summarized data, then you would want to change this option to chart values from a table. And I will look at that in another video. Uh, but here we're just building from the raw data. Now, what are our pie options? Um, I can order them by the order of the slices. I have only two options in the um, in my gender column, so this doesn't really matter. Um, I can choose the start angle, so I can make it ninety degrees or zero degrees, or again somewhere around. The pie, you can pick anywhere from zero to 360. And then combine slices of this percent or less. And um, in this particular example, um, we don't have, we only have two slices, so nothing is that small. But this is an option that we could use with the nationality case. Um, I would suggest because we have so many um, slices that we would probably want to increase um, this slice size if we were to use that. Uh, but we can hit OK by accepting the default here. Um, graph labels, again, we want to create a good title. So we would say pie chart of um, gender of business students. And then again, we'll worry about those labels. Slice labels, um, we can put the category name, the frequency or the percent. A good pie chart should have the percents labeled. Now um, you can uh, have the category name there also, or it can be in a legend. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. It's a little easier to read. And again, we have only the two categories. Um, 
So it should be fine. When we get a lot of pie slices, having the category name next to the slices can become a problem because they might print over top of each other. But this is something that you can experiment with. Um, but it, generally, if you have a minimum number of pie slices that you stick to the rule of thumb, most of the time you'll be okay. Um, and then multiple graphs. So you can create, if you're doing multiple variables, you can create multiple graphs. Remember, it can't all go in the same graph, but you can create separate graphs. Um, again, we're not going to worry about this now because we just want a nice, simple data chart. And then, of course, we talked about these data options. If you want to exclude certain rows or things like that, then you can do that. And then finally, when you're ready, select OK. And we have a nice pie chart. It's very easy to read. We have the percentages. We have the labels. They are duplicated in the legend. And so that's why you don't need to label the, the slices. Um, male or female is very easy to, uh, they're very short, so they wouldn't get in the way. Some of the nationalities are a little longer. But this is a nice, simple pie chart. Now, what if we wanted to do one of gender, of nationality? So let's go and actually try the other graph builder option. Um, now we're going to not select bar chart, but we're going to select pie chart. Um, and I'm going to get rid of the gender, just do nationality pie chart of nationality. And so one of the issues that you can see here is that we have we have a nice legend, um, but uh, we have way too many slices. There's just too much going on. And some of these are very small slices. We can see the US takes up a lot of it, but we want to uh, try to clean this up a little bit. So we have some options for different pie charts types. Um, so for instance, a donut chart is basically a pie chart with a hole in the middle. Um, this is also perfectly fine. Um, it's perfectly nice to like mix things up a little bit. You can also do a semicircle, um, but I think it's a little more common to use just either the regular pie chart or the donut chart type. Um, and then you can also sequence the slices. So we saw this with the bars on the bar graph um, by default or you can order them by largest to smallest. This is, uh, I think, a little bit easier. Again, the order sequencing things is sometimes a little bit easier to interpret because they're not so random. What we can do, um, oh, and before I do that, um, if you order them the other way, it's just a matter of which order they go around in. So it's the same thing because it's all in a circle. Um, what we can do is, uh, in this case, anything that is less than, let's say, 2% uh, gets combined into other. So here's our other. Uh, and that reduces the number of slices. You can experiment with this um, to see how far apart, how much breakout that you want to give it. Um, but again, the rule of thumb is about seven slices. And so you don't want too many because then that makes the graph too busy. Uh, and so you also want to make sure that um, the graph is nice and readable. Um, so you can you can play around with this um, as in this this mini tab is really nice in that it, it'll it'll you know group these things for you, uh, whereas some other programs won't necessarily do that. You have to do that yourself. And if I produce this graph, then I can go in and now I can uh, look at some of my graph options. Um, pie chart of nationality is perfectly fine. Uh, what I want to do is labels. So again, as a minimum, you should have percentages displayed on your slices. Um, because, you know, we can see the relative sizes, but sometimes uh, things look very similar and we want to be able to actually distinguish, are they actually the same or is one actually bigger or smaller than each other? And then again, optionally, 
if it's not going to make your graph look too busy, you can add category names. For instance, like this, this doesn't look too bad because we reduced um, the number of categories. Adding the counts, that's what the frequency stands for, is very uncommon in a pie chart. And again, generally speaking, only do it when you really have no other options. And again, you can go back uh, into the data representations and you can make some adjustments to the format even after you've created it. It's one of those nice things about the graph builder option. Super. Now we have our nice donut chart, AKA pie chart with a hole in the middle uh, in order to look at the nationalities of our students.